All right, sports fans, it's September 21st. We are in Denver, Colorado, the capital city of the great state of Colorado. Today we're going to interview a journalist named Brandon Johansson. Brandon works for the Aurora Sentinel, and he's a crime writer. And he covered very extensively, and is still covering very extensively, the July 20th shootings and other gun-related topics. My name is Henry Rollins, and I'm embarking on a tour through every state capital in America, all the way up to November's presidential elections. I want to learn a few things, and knowledge without mileage equals bullshit. So come follow me into what Mark Twain called the territory. This is Capitalism 2012. Brandon, not only are you a resident of the Aurora, Denver area, but you're also a journalist. In your estimation, what was the overall impact of the uh, July 20th uh, Batman uh, shootings? It's, it's hard to say right now what the, what the impact is, but I don't think we're going to know that for a long time. Right now, it's still very raw. People are still dealing with, I mean, the injuries even. Some folks are still maybe not in the hospital, but they're in long-term care, those kind of facilities. You know, what was the impact of the attention on Aurora, just like, you know, on a real, you know, real local scale? People think of Aurora as a place where a lot of crime happens. Even if that's not fair, that's the perception that Aurora deals with, especially here in the metro area. And I think there was a lot of folks who felt like, oh, of course it's in Aurora. Some, right. Something to that effect, which really isn't fair. Forbes last year named one of the uh, number nine on the list of safest cities in America. I mean, it's a city of 330,000 people. So yeah, it has some crime, but every city of 330,000 people does. Aurora gets kind of a, a bad rap here. For us, it's kind of weird. I mean, we're, we're the local paper. You know, I, I cover crime in general. So when this happened, it, my brain was going a million different directions. Didn't really have time to process that piece of it until a few days later. And then it, it really hit you like, wow, I mean, Columbine was, it seemed like that was the worst thing imaginable. I was 16 when it happened, and it was just, I mean, it was so incredibly hard to deal with, you know? And then this happens again, and right here, I mean, same metro area. People here are very friendly. It's, it's just not, I don't know, it's hard to believe that twice that that happened here. I come here every tour I do since 1981 or two. I think 82 is the first time I was here. It always strikes me as a very friendly place. You just don't see this as a place where that would happen. And Columbine, I think it really changed what a lot of people think about guns and young people. And you mentioned that you were 16 when that happened. So that must have had a real relevance to you because these are, you're in high school, obviously. These are high school kids being assassinated by a high school kid. I mean, it, that, that kind of youth eating its own is, is so incredibly heartbreaking. For you, as a young person, clocking that at the time, what was that like? That one I remember losing sleep. That one was hard to kind of comprehend, hard to digest. And I just think this one was easier, unfortunately, to digest because since Columbine, we've had Virginia Tech, we've had so many others that the way our editor put it in the editorial was that, unfortunately, it was just Aurora's turn. That was it. I mean, these things happen all over, and it just happened to hit an Aurora this time. My take on the whole thing is very, very simple. I think America has a very interesting take on the Second Amendment, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. One sentence, two commas, two clauses. The militia clause and the rights to arms clause. No one has yet told me a satisfactory definition of what a well-regulated militia is and how that can be defined in modern society. I think we can at least have the conversation about when you buy a whole lot of rounds of ammunition, anything after like 300 rounds, maybe that goes on some FBI awareness uh, bulletin. Uh, when you buy a bunch of bullets and body armor in the same order, maybe someone federally should know about that. Some people would say that would be infringing upon your Fourth Amendment rights to privacy. I say it might keep some people alive. And so some people might argue, well, uh, you're sacrificing freedom for security and you deserve neither. Ah, point well taken. Past that, I don't know what you do, except teach your children well.